this song is a prayer that we sing. It says, Lord, my cup is empty. Lord, my cup is empty. Fill me with your spirit to overflow, to overflow. And that's our prayer today. That's our prayer for the United States of America. That's our prayer for Edgewood Church. That's our prayer for the Church of God in the United States of America. We need God to move. And this, this song is such a humble song and such a mighty song. Because it does that, it acknowledges that we're empty, but that He, He's everything. You know, when we look to Him and when we allow Him to move in our lives, He moves in power. That's what we're trusting God to do this year.
to overflow. Oh, sing it again. cry out to God, He hears us. And, and really what God wants more than anything is just, He wants honesty. He, he looks for integrity. You know, we, we talked about a few weeks back at the very beginning of our clean series, we talked about how what we normally tend to do is we see something and we want it. It's coveting. We see it, we covet it, we take it, and then we hide it. And sometimes we even think that we've been able to hide it from God, but we, we can, and all he wants is for us to just come clean, right? You may be seated. I'm going to be reading a few verses of Scripture this morning, and then we're going to um, sing one more song before we, we go down on our knees, and then we'll close with a song. We'll, we'll have our prayer of repentance, but... Our series has been called Clean, and I just recapped the, the first message for you. The message after that, we were talking about how um, one of the things that we, we forfeit when we're, we're not clean is it's not, it's not our salvation. You know, when you, when you fall into sin, when you fall into uncleanness, you don't lose your salvation. But there's two things that it really affects very strongly. It, it affects your destiny. It affects what God wants you to do. You know, because when, when, we, when we fall into uncleanness, when we allow sin into our lives, it, it stops us from seeing what God wants us to see. It stops us from hearing what God wants us to hear. It stops us from going where God wants us to go, and it stops us from touching who God wants us to touch. And that's really our destiny. Our destiny is to change people's lives. Our destiny as born-again Christians in this life is to, is to have a positive effect in the world that surrounds us. But when we allow uncleanness into our life, that, that, that just shuts our mouths. It stops our hands. It just keeps us from doing and being what he wants us to be. And it affects our destiny. It affects the destiny of those around us. There's another thing that it does. We, Pastor Sam so powerfully showed us about Jesus and how uh, after he was filled with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, that the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And we were talking about how, you know, you cannot bind the devil with words. I used to pray that all the time. Satan, I bind you. And, you know, you, you can't do that with words. You know, when you look in the temptations of Jesus, he's been given the kingdoms of the world. They belong to him. He can give them to anybody he wants. He, 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 you know, in Job, we see that he was walking about on earth and going back and forth in it. And, you know, God gave it to him. It belongs to him for a, a short period of time. We can't bind him with words. How can you bind Satan? There's only one way, by not giving in to temptation. When we give in to temptation, he has his way. When we don't give in to temptation, what? It shuts his mouth. It shuts his mouth. It keeps him from being able to do anything in our lives. And it, and it, and it, and it, does, and it brings power into our life and authority. You see, God has placed a measure of authority in you. God has placed a measure of power and authority in each one of us who are his believers. And when we, when we walk in an unclean path, that authority is just taken right out of our hands. We, and again, you know, it silences us. It shuts our mouths. It, it stops us. And that's why, you know, we want 
to be honest before God. That's why we must be honest before God. Because God, you know, listen, the United States of America is in the place it's in right now, not because of Republicans and Democrats. It's in the place it's in right now because the, the church has dabbled in sin and played around with it and just thought, oh, it's no big deal. I'll just ask forgiveness. And, and for a, a, a wide group of us, listen, I went over all the statistics in that first week about uh, pornography and, and websites and all these things that we, we, we allow into our lives. And when we dabble like that, it just, it silences the church and it, weak, it takes away the power and the authority of the church. And that's why America is where it is today. And, and, and when we see revival, what's, you know, let me read through the clean verses. Psalm 51.10 says, create in me. You know, it's not something you can do. You can't clean your own heart. Jesus did it. That's what I was talking about with that song, you know, uh, the stand. It's, it's talking about being faultless before the throne. It's through the blood of Jesus. Uh, my hope is built on nothing less than, but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground. Create in me. This is a work of creation. It's just it's the same that, that happened when you were born and he breathed into you the breath of life when he was forming you and knitting you together in your mother's womb, which is one of the greatest sins of the land of America, of the 60 million babies that have been murdered in our country. Hitler didn't even touch that. Hitler only gave a tithe of that number of the people that he, he killed. Just 10%. Imagine. Imagine. Create in me, Lord, we need God to do a work in us. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. And as, you know, as Tim was reading on Monday Night Prayer, he says, then will I instruct sinners. You know, when God does this work in us, then I will, my mouth will be opened again. Then I'll be able to do what God wants me to do. When God does this creative work in me. Our next verse was Psalm 24, 3 through 4. It says, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. And then our other verse was from John 15, which gives us the key to all of this. Because it says, already you are clean. Why? Because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. See, that's the key right there. Because I'm going to stumble and fall. Uh, it was it was joked that I'm close to perfect. No, none of us. I'm not close to perfect. None of us are close to perfect. We stumble and fall. It's the word of God. And it's the, the, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross without which no one is, has forgiveness, without which no one has eternal life, without which no one, you know, is, is free from judgment. It's only by the, by the blood of Jesus what he did for us on the cross at Calvary. He made forgiveness possible. And, and he also made cleanness possible. We're never going to be perfectly clean. That's why it says that if I sin, I have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. But don't allow yourself to dabble that way. And we've got to start to train ourselves. You know, Paul said to, in, in, you know, in, in Romans chapter 12 that we are to, to train ourselves not to be conformed anymore to this world, but to be transformed, as Pastor Ron was sharing with us last week, by the renewing of our mind. In 2 Chronicles 714 says this, then the Lord appeared, or 12 to 14 rather, then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. We don't go to the temple anymore, but at that point it was, the temple was built by Solomon. It was a place for sacrifice. You see, our place of sacrifice is Jesus. Jesus is your place of sacrifice. Jesus is the one that we, always, you know, when you ask for forgiveness of God, it must always be based upon the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. It's not about being sorry. You can be sorry all you want, and you won't be forgiven until you plead the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's based on his sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens, he says, so that there is no rain, Or command the locusts to devour the land. Or send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name 
humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and this I think is the key, right? And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And so there's got to be this turning. There, there's got to be this, this desire in our heart to no longer walk hand in hand with the world. One foot in the world and one foot in the church. He wants us to clean up that in our lives. He wants us to walk in power. And listen, we're living in days where we need God's power. We need the power of God. Because if you haven't noticed, if you're not watching the news, and if you haven't seen the, the, the state of our country, we're in a mess. And the church is the answer because Jesus is the answer. And we've got to start pointing to the church and stop pointing at each other and start pointing to Jesus. Pointing to Jesus. Uh, Galatians 1 or rather 5, verses 1 and 13. And, and Will read this yesterday in Men's Breakfast. He says, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. And it goes on and says, for you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. This is, this is the temptation of every one of us. We use our freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. Peter says the same thing. I love the way it is recorded in, in Peter's epistle. 1 Peter 2.16 says, live as people who are free. Not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil. But living as servants of God. And sometimes our, our Christianity is one of the greatest ways we can hide our evil. Because I'm a Christian. No one will think I'm doing that. And we just, and we can dabble in it. Or we can find ourselves just, let me just click here and see, oh, you know, and innocently go to this place that we know we're not supposed to be. And we pretend it's innocent. We're lying to ourselves. We're deceiving ourselves. God wants us to be clean. And, and he wants to do a, a deep work in us. He has a, a deep work in, in each of us to do. And, 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 and today represents one of the things that really brings this about. Because we're coming together as a, as, a, as a church, as a congregation, to humble ourselves before the Lord. This is something that was done many, many times in Scripture. I'm just going to read you a couple of, of examples. In 1 Samuel 7, verses 3 through 6, it says, And Samuel said to all the house of Israel, If you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, then what? Then put away the foreign gods and the ashtoreth from among you and direct your hearts to the Lord and serve him only. Get rid of those things. You know, you know what's in your life. You know the things in your life that we allow because we can. We live in a free country. Do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. You know what those things are in your life that, that you need to, to put away. Then put away the foreign gods and the ashtrays from among you and direct your heart to the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. He will bring deliverance into your life. So the people of Israel put away the Baals and the Ashtaroth, and they served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, gather all Israel. See, it was, a, it, was a, it was a gathering of all the people. He said, gather all Israel at Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered at Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and, and said there, we have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the people of Israel at Mizpah. They gathered together. They were taking this thing seriously. Listen, as the church of Jesus Christ, we have to take what's happening in the United States of America seriously. We are in dire straits. America's at a crossroads. And whichever road we, we, we're going to take is going to have a, a massive, a major effect on your, on your life, on your Christianity. We're, we're like this, this close from Christianity being outlawed in our own country, in many areas and in many ways. You see the fight, you know, now that, now, now that there's a pro-life president. You see the fight even with this abortion issue, how people are getting crazy, crazy. It's to the point now that the baby can be born alive and you can still kill it. Are you kidding me? This is craziness. A thing to be judged. This close. 
we can't take for granted the freedoms that we have as Christians. You know, the day of the Lord is coming. You know, Jesus is coming back. And, and, and unfortunately, that, that's, the reality of that is, is that things are going to get worse before they get better. Yeah, we win. We know that. We win, right? But things are going to get worse before they get better for the church. This is why he says this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints. Because we're the ones that are going to be targeted. And if you have, hadn't noticed it already, you know, they don't care about Donald Trump. It said he's standing up for Christian principles. Some of you even can't even believe he's doing that. I can't either. But he is. He is. And so he's a major target. It's the same way that Haman attacked the Jews. You know, that, that story amazes me in Esther. Haman goes to the king and says, hey, king, there's a certain people in your kingdom that shouldn't be tolerated. They don't follow the king's orders, which was a lie. They were the most faithful servants of the king, as was proven by Mordecai and his own, his own, his own queen Esther, which he didn't even realize. Here, here's what's so amazing about that. There's a certain people that should not be tolerated. You know, isn't it amazing that the, 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 the party of, of, of tolerance is so intolerant towards Christians? And what did Haman say? You know, he said, I, you know, I'll put 50,000 silver coins into the king's treasury and I'll annihilate all these people. He says, uh, keep the money and do what you want with the people. Do what you want with the people. No investigation. He didn't even know who the people were. He didn't realize that his, his own queen was one of them. That Mordecai, who's going to find out later on, who spoke up to save the king from Bithan and Teresh, who had, who had, who had uh, uh, conspired to kill the king. It was, it was one of these people that had spoken up to save the king. See, they, these were the most loyal people in his kingdom. He didn't even do an inspection. He didn't even look into it at all. The, the, we, hear, we hear things spewed out against Christianity today about how, how hateful we are. We hate homosexuals. We hate Planned Parenthood. We hate all these people. We hate it. No, we don't. We're the only ones that really, truly love them. Listen, we don't pinpoint a specific group of people for, for, um, for repentance. Everyone needs to repent. Not right now, Will. Everyone needs to repent. Everyone. Joel, I'm skipping Chronicles. Let me just read from, from 2 Chronicles 20 real quick. Let me not. I don't need to. I've already said enough. There's a lot of verses of Scripture in there that you need to read. In 2 Chronicles 20, when the, when the huge army came against Jehoshaphat, I love what the NIV says, it alarmed, he proclaimed a fast. He, no, he resolved to seek the Lord, and then he proclaimed a fast. Alarmed, resolved, proclaimed. We need to be alarmed at the state of things in the United States of America today. We need to be resolved to seek the Lord, and we need to proclaim a fast. We need, that's what this is today. We didn't really proclaim a fast, per se, but we've called a day to repent of our sins. And churches all across America will be getting on their knees today in prayers of repentance. We need this so much. And my prayers is that God will speak so strongly to our hearts. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up. We're going to sing that song, I Surrender. And then we're going to all get down on our knees and pray. And then we'll come up with one more song and I'm going to close. I just want to read Joel 2, verses 1 and 12 to 17. He says, blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. In other words, I don't want to see an outward display. I want your hearts to be touched. 
Is your heart moved by what you see going on in this country? Or do you just, oh, well, what will be, will be. No. God has called you to a place as an intercessor. God has given you wisdom and understanding. You know what's going on. We are responsible to be intercessors before God, to cry out to God, to rend our hearts and not our garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Now listen to this language. Gather the people. Consecrate the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children. Even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber between the vestibule and the altar. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Pastor here this morning. All right, well, why don't you sit down, Joel? Come on up, and uh, Greg and some others, prayer warriors. Come on up. Let's. We're going to pray for Will. touching will right now with your healing power and because we're asking you to Lord God that nothing is impossible with you and nothing is too difficult for you Lord and you are able to relieve him of these migraines and of this back pain and deliver him completely Lord because nothing is impossible with you God and we trust you this morning Lord Jesus touch my brother Lord God with your power with your love Lord Jesus last cry of the prophet was, spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? As we call upon God in, in honesty and in truth, as we get real with God, as we say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to let these things in my life anymore. I'm I, I'm, I'm making a conscious decision, Lord God, to follow you. And if I fall, I will, I will come to you immediately in repentance. And God, I'm going to ask you to strengthen me to live clean before you. Do a work in me, Lord God. 
we will see God do powerful things. We will see God bring many to salvation. We will see his healing hand go forth. Lord, we do just right now plead the blood of Jesus over this place, God, and we recognize and know, Lord, that that the enemy is not happy with what you're doing here and with the messages that we've been preaching. He's never happy when we expose sin. He wants us to just pretend that all sin is okay and that we can just keep going on living in it, Lord God. But when we do that, he attacks us. And we just, we just plead the blood of Jesus. We pray for your hand of protection upon us, for your healing power to be moving mightily in our midst, O oh Lord God, to uphold us and, and to keep us by your power and by your spirit. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Let's stand right now. We're going to surrender all to Jesus with this song, and then we're going to have our prayer of repentance before the Lord. to me. 
This time we're going to get down on our knees. You can turn around and on your seat and kneel on your chair. You can come up to the front here and kneel down on the altar or kneel down somewhere around here. Let's just get a place and find a place of a humble position before the Lord. Father, first of all, it's our heart. that we want to be clean before you, Lord Jesus. Lord, and we are asking you right now to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord God, and anything that we've allowed in our life that it would make us unclean. Strengthen us, Lord God, and help us, Jesus, by your power and by your spirit to walk clean before you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for those things that we've allowed in our life as individuals, Lord, that have kept us from the destiny you have from us, from the power and the authority that you have wanted to place in us, Lord. Help us to be the men and the women of God that you want us to be. We commit to you. And now, Lord, as we come before you for our, our land, Father, the first thing we want to do this morning is to thank you for giving us one of the greatest nations that has ever existed in the world. We want to thank you that in this country, Lord, that we have had opportunities and freedoms that simply do not exist in many countries of the world. We acknowledge that these opportunities and freedoms exist because of a belief in you, the almighty God, our Father, and in your Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit who lives in us, who repent and believe in you. Lord, you have caused us to be born again by your spirit. And even though not every one of us believes in you and trusts in you, yet because so many have, our Lord, our nation has been shaped by godly principles. And we have walked in the fear of the Lord and desired to honor you with our lives. Father, you have been so good to us. We praise your name because of the blessings you have poured out upon us. We are able to freely speak the truth and gather together in your name without fear of repercussions because of our belief in you. We are able to work with our hands and to earn an honest living, own our, our homes, and help others in need. Indeed, you have prospered us greatly, Lord. There is no one like you, Lord. You are the creator of all things. In you we live and move and have our being. And without you... We can do nothing. It is you who have given us life and breath and everything else. You are our God, and we worship you, Lord. But, Father, we want to acknowledge this morning that we have fallen short and missed the mark in many ways. We come to you with humble hearts and ask you to forgive us of our sins. In agreement with your word, Lord, we ask you to forgive us when we have been complacent. Forgive us, Lord God, when we have looked out for our own interests and neglected your interests. Forgive us, Lord, when we have fallen from our first love. Forgive us, Lord, for when we have not spoken up about righteousness and self-control and judgment and the judgment to come. 
Forgive us when we have fallen asleep, Lord God. Forgive us when we have watered down the gospel and sought to be loved by the world rather than by you. Forgive us when we have desired worldly riches and not true riches. Oh, Lord, forgive us, for we have seen prayer taken out of the schools. We have watched as the Ten Commandments are removed. We have seen the legalizing of murder in the womb. We have seen untold thousands of our girls and boys stolen into slavery. We have seen the relationship between one man and one woman desecrated. We have watched as those things that are, you call perversion and an abomination are glorified and justified. Father, we repent. Again, Lord God, and according to your word, Father, we repent of evil thoughts. We repent of sexual immorality. We repent of theft. We repent of murder. We repent of adultery. We repent of coveting. We repent of wickedness. We repent of deceit. We repent of sensuality. We repent of envy. We repent of slander. We repent of gossip. We repent of pride. We repent of foolishness. We repent of disobedience to parents. We repent of being lovers of self. We repent of being lovers of money. We repent of being ungrateful. We repent of being unholy. Lord, we repent of being without self-control. We repent of being lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And we repent, Lord, of having an appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Father, we repent. And we ask you to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask you, Lord, to create in us a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from us, Lord. Keep your servants, Father, from willful sins and grant us a willing spirit to sustain us. Lord, again, your word says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Father, we turn from our wicked ways right now. Give us the strength to acknowledge that which is wicked about our ways and to truly take action to remove it, to walk from it, to turn from it, to repent. Father, help us not to love in word or talk only, but in actions and in truth, according to 1 John 3.18. Lord, we acknowledge that we truly need revival in our country, and so we're asking you to send a revival. Send a wave of repentance across our land, O oh God. Restore a healthy fear of the Lord into the hearts of your people. Help us to truly love without compromising on truth in any way. And let the world once again see what we have and desire it. Lord, we acknowledge that salvation is in your name only. So turn to us now, Lord, and have mercy on us, as you always do to those who love your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Casting.